All right. Okay, so a blessed and gracious day, my dear friends and colleagues. Good morning po, Ma'am Marilou. Good morning, Sir Elmer, Ma'am Anna Rose, and to those teachers who are listening in their in the comfort of their houses. So before we formally start our session today, please allow me to share with you a quotation from Albert Einstein. Wisdom is not a product of schooling, but of the lifelong attempt to acquire it. Today marks a significant moment for our institution as we gain new insights, learning, and information. This is Sir Lawrence Virai, your Master of Ceremony, and I welcome all of you to our teaching session with the topic, Developing Growth Mindset. So to officially start our program, let us, say, let us first seek wisdom and guidance as we ask for the providence of our Almighty God. And at this point, may I request everyone to please uh, put, the, uh, put yourselves in the presence of our Lord for our opening prayer to be led by our Filipino teacher, Ma'am Marisa B. Viray. Magandang umaga po. Tayo po ay manalangin. Panginoon, maraming salamat po sa panibagong araw at sa buhay na muli mo pong ipinagkaloob sa bawat isa sa amin. Patawarin mo po kami sa mga pagkakasalang amin nagagawa sa bawat araw. Dalangin ko nga po na disiplinahin mo po kami sa paumagitan ng inyong pag-ibig. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa mga ganitong pagkakataon na ipinagkakaloob mo po sa amin para kami ay magkakasama-sama upang ipagpatuloy ang pagpapalago sa aming profesyon bilang mga guro. Turuan mo nga po kami na magamit sa aming kanyang-kanyang trabaho ang mga bagay na aming matututunan sa araw na ito. Pagkalooban po ninyo ng sapat na katalinuhan at kaalaman ang aming mga tagapagsalita sa araw na ito. Gamitin mo nga po silang lalo upang ibahagi ang kanilang mga kaalaman sa mga gurong katulad namin. Dalangin ko po na patuloy mo kaming ingatan kasama ng aming kanya-kanyang pamilya. Ito po ang aking sampo dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much Ma'am Marisa for that very humble prayer. So before we formally start and continue, it is just right to show our patriotism to our country by singing the national anthem of, of the Republic of the Philippines. May I request everyone to please sing heartedly the English version of the Lupang Hinirang. Land of the morning, child of the sun returning, with fervor burning, be to our souls adore. Land dear and holy, cradle of noble heroes, never shall invaders trample thy sacred shores. Ever within the skies and through the clouds and all the hills and seas, do we behold the radiance, feel the throb of glorious liberty. Thy banner dear to all our hearts, its sun and stars alike, for oh, never shall the shining fields be dear my tyrant's might. Beautiful land of love, oh land of light, in thy embrace this rapture to life. But it is glory ever when thou art grown, for as thy sons do suffer and die. Okay, so thank you very much everyone. So they say that learning is a continuous process and only through our love for learning shall we grow and become better in this profession. At this juncture, to share some words of wisdom, let us welcome our teacher in charge for the English and Filipino department, Teacher 3, Ma'am Kenneth Joyce Nebrida. Thank you very much, Sir Lawrence, for that introduction. Again, to my colleagues, good morning and to... Um, Ma'am Marilu, good evening there in Arizona. Good evening. So I am tasked to share some thought to ponder for this uh, webinar. Since our topic is about growth mindset, let me just share a simple quotation from Enid uh, Blyton. Uh, the quotation says, the best way to treat obstacles is to use them as your stepping stones Laugh at them, tread on them, and let them lead you to something better. 
So this quotation reminds us to use those obstacles or challenges to our advantage and let us not use them as an excuse in hindering us to grow in our professional growth. Okay, I think Mom Kenneth yeah. is already done. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mom Kenneth, for that impeccable thoughts to ponder for this session. Indeed, we must uh, we must try to see the silver lining in every obstacle yeah. that we are encountering in this life. So at this point, this is cut so they can see. Okay. So at this point, to acknowledge the presence of everyone. For the checking of attendance, let me give the floor to our science teacher, Teacher One, Ma'am Angelica P. Kunan. Okay, good morning, everyone. So they said that positive thoughts generate positive feelings. And of course, it attracts positive life experiences. So in that, as we check our attendance today, we shall be optimistic. As I call your name, kindly say, think positive talk positive and feel positive. So are you all ready? Okay, so let's start with Mom Marjorie Canilao. Hello, ma'am. Okay, how about let's check if Mom Like a Rose is here. Mom, like a rose? Yes. Hi. Good morning. I am really here. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, Ma'am Kunan, I'm very happy to, you know, say that phrase, but could you please repeat that? Okay, Ma'am. So we will Think say positive, talk positive, and feel positive. All right, let me do that one more time or let me say it. So good morning, everyone. I am M. Like Rose Ho Chico, English teacher in Magdebe High School. And I always think positive, talk positive, and what's that again? Feel positive, oh, ma'am. Feel positive. <laughs> oh, okay. that's right. Oh, thank you, mom. Okay, next, let's have Mom Vilma Mendoza. Hey. Good morning, everyone. I am Mom Vilma Mendoza, English teacher, and I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. That's right. Okay, next, let's have Mom Kenneth Choice Nebrida. Yes. So I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Thank you. Next, let's have Sir Rolex Bier. Good morning, po. Good morning, okay. sir. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Yes, of course. Now let's have Mom Rana Korea. Hello, good morning, po. Always remember to think, talk, and feel positive. Yes, that's right, Mom. Next, let's have Mom Charlene Marquez. Okay, with the present of Sir Jewel. Hello, sir. Okay, so now let's move on with our next teacher. Let's have Mom Marisa Virai. Good morning, Po. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Yes, Po. Next, we have Mom Janeline Ignacio. Yes, good morning po. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Okay, mom, thank you. Next, let's have mom Mary Grace Lorenzo. Good morning po. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Okay, next, let's have mom Priscilla Salita. Good morning po. I always think, talk, and feel positive. That's right, Mom. Next, let's have Mom Lesilda Sarmiento. Hello, Mom Bless. Okay, so we will 
be right back with Mom Bless later. Okay, now let's move on with Mom Raquel Kabiling. Okay, next, how about let's move on with Mom Janet Brihida Katipon. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Thank you, Mom Angel. Thank you, ma'am. Next, let's have with Sir Mark Lopez. Good morning, Paul. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Okay, of course, as part of science department, I'm Angelica Kunan. I think positive, talk positive, and also feel positive. Next, let's have the AP department. Let's have Sir Lancer Pingol. Hello, good morning. I'm uh, Lance Pingol here. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. That's right, sir. Next, let's move on with Ma'am Katrina Santos. Hello, good morning, Po. I think positive, I talk positive, and I feel positive, but not with COVID. <laughs> That's right, Mom. Okay, next, let's have with Sir George Santos. Hi. Good morning, Po. I always think and talk and feel positive. That's right. Okay, next, let's have Mom Mary Jane Estepa. Mom Mary Jane. Okay, how about Sir Alan Gada? Okay, next, how about Mom Ruby Lee Gutierrez? Morning, Po. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. That's right, Mom. Next, let's have Mom Charlene Santos. Good morning, Po. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Thank you, Mom. Next, let's have Mom Melody De Torres. Morning, Po. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Okay. Next, let's have Mom Christina Moroda. Good morning, Po. Uh, sa lahat po ng sitwasyon ko sa buhay, I always practice to think, talk, and feel positive. That's right, ma'am. As always, next, let's have Ma'am Alma G. Pineda. A pleasant morning po sa lahat. So I always think, talk, and feel positive all the time. All the time. That's right, ma'am. Next, let's have Sir Brett Hart Sunga. Okay, so it is very imperative indeed that I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Thank you. Thank you. Next, let's have Sir Marco Dungo. Hi, good morning. I am Sir Marco, and I always think, talk, and feel positive. Okay, next, let's have Sir Erickson Gaddy. Good morning po to everyone. I always think. Uh, speak and feel positive. Okay, next let's have Mom Grisel de Mesa. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. That's right, Mom. Next, let's have Mom Jocelyn Santos. Mom Jo. Okay, next, how about Mom? I always think, talk, and feel positive. That's right, ma'am. Next, how about Mom Annette Malig? Uh, good morning. I think positive. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Next, Hello, okay. let's have Mom Crystal Tiglao. Good morning. I always think positive, speak positive, and feel positive. Okay. How about Ma'am Rhea Gamad? Good morning po. So a daily rem reminder to everyone, we should never forget to think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. That's right. Okay. How about Sir Virai Lawrence? Okay, good morning po. So we must always think positive, 
talk positive and feel positive. Okay, thank you, sir. Next, how about Ma'am Ana Rose Cabrera? Hello po. I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. That's right, ma'am. And our very own Sir Elmer Meneses. I always uh, think positive, do positive things, and feel positive. Always. That is my commitment. Good okay. morning, everyone. That's right. Thank you, everyone. I think we are all ready to actively participate in our seminar today. So back to you, Sir Lawrence. And um, uh, I think we, I saw a name here, Miss Celeste. She was my former co-teacher from Ayala, Alabang. Miss Celeste, I would like to welcome you also. And would you like to say the same positivity? Let's try. Okay, good morning, Teacher Mali. Uh, let's try to always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. Thank you, Miss Celeste, for joining us. Okay now. Okay, so thank you so much, Mama Angelica, for that very creative roll call. So as I can still remember the quotation from Chinkitan, and I would like to share it to you, my dear teachers. Positive mindset plus positive action is equals to positive result. So we must always use those positive mindset in our teaching career and in this profession. So now, right now, uh, everyone, to ease the tension and to lighten up the mood, requesting everyone's participation for our energizer to be facilitated by our teacher in charge for the math and science department, teacher three, Ma'am Janet Brigida A. Katipon. Okay, thank you, Sir Lawrence, for that uh, introduction. So once again, good morning po sa lahat. So like the, uh, unlike the usual energizer that we have whenever we have the webinar or lab session, uh, we do it physically. For now, we do it mentally by participating in our game called Create a Word. So uh, if you're ready, so let's begin. Uh, Sir Lawrence, next slide, please. Okay, for the first slide, we have the letter E. Can you derive a word by... Uh, describing what has been illustrated in this slide. Anyone? Anyone po? Sino po makakaisip kung ano naka-illustrate sa ating, uh, kung anong meron sa slide? The letter E. Uh, Yes, partially correct, sir. But uh, depending on the description, what is it for? It's a capital letter E. What else? Letter E inside the box. It's a capital red letter E on a white canvas. Uh, can you make that it uh, very concise? Sir Elmer, you got, the, uh, you got your point already. Can you uh, make it concise? Ready. <laughs> Okay, that's correct. <laughs> okay, it's a red E, ready. Okay, next slide, sir. Okay. Lawrence. Okay. okay, we have uh, two words. Vice versa. By, is, is it vice versa, Sir Elmer? By, vice versa, I think. Okay, can we need another? Advice. advice. Or revise. 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 Po yung sumagot ng advice. advice. That's right po. Yes, that's, that's the precise one. Advice. You add uh, advice to the advice, that's advice. Okay, next one, please. Sir Lawrence. How freedom. about freedom? Freedom. 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 Correct. Sir Lawrence, can you show the answer? Okay. The fourth one. The fourth... Uh, Illustration. Forget. 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 Very good. Next one is the last one. I think the last one. I ah, not yet. Backdoor. Backdoor. Back back door. Door. 
Correct. Okay. Tagaling ng mga kasamaan ko talaga. <laughs> okay. Oh, the last one, I think. What's this? To marry. Summary. Summary. Nice. Summary. Wow, my God. Good, kagaling na po. Uh, so, yan na lang po uh, for our energizer. Uh, back to you, Sir Lawrence. Thank you so much, Ma'am Jeanette, for that very entertaining activity. And now, to formally introduce our very dynamic, impressive, and respected school principal, let us have our focal person in senior high school, Sir Erickson L. Gadi. Sir Erickson. Okay na po? Yes po. Okay. Good morning po to everyone. I was stopped to introduce to you our school head. And indeed, I feel elated knowing the fact of introducing a man of virtue and with whom I have taken my inspiration. If one will glimpse or take a closer look at the alchemy of achieving person, two particular virtues shine up besides perseverance and hard work. These are pioneering spirits and willingness. The person, this, this person is the living idiom of a man who fostered leadership with great heart and humility, not too loud, but to acknowledge or acknowledge some of his achievements in his educational background. He just finished two master's degree, namely Master of Education, major in mathematics and educational management. He continued his studies and became a doctor of philosophy. Paired with an imposing background, it was not consequently surprising that he became what he is right now. When asked about him, who he is, may not be a surprise. After all, he has become the person he is now because of the hard work and perseverance he implied during his edu education. And to rightly mention his achievements. Without any further ado, let us all welcome our school head, Dr. Elmer Ermineses, Principal 4 of Makabebe High School. Let us give him a virtual applause. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Thank you very much for such a uh, 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 a very uh, nice introduction. I hope uh, I am the one you uh, you introduce. Uh, of course, uh, uh, this is a great privilege for uh, everyone, especially for your principal. Okay, to be part of this uh, very very timely uh, webinar. Okay, uh, basically we are after the vital impact of this. Uh, Webinar among teachers, and of course, may this cascade to may this cascade to our students. Uh, the the great learning today, I hope, would be, would become an instrument for us to improve our delivery of uh, the basic services in uh, education. And uh, of course, uh, our student may uh, benefit from this. No, and uh, uh, this is really a, a good opportunity and uh, a a valued opportunity for us to develop partnership with the uh, foreign uh, uh, entities like, uh, of course, the teacher's best friend. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity also, uh, not just to welcome everyone, but to extend my gratitude to our, uh, to our uh, sponsor, uh, uh, Madam uh, Mary Lou Areno, okay? the superintendent of uh, Dichi Biko Community School in uh, Arizona. Uh, with this, ma'am, uh, uh, I, I would like to welcome everyone, and again, I will. I would like to uh, strongly uh, 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 extend my appreciation. Thank you very much for being part of DEPED, uh, extending your uh, expertise to help us improve uh, our delivery of education. 
thank you very much and welcome uh, once again welcome to uh, the, the development uh, uh, developing a growth uh, uh, mindset it's okay. my pleasure sir Okay, thank you very much, sir, for those inspiring and uplifting words as we take the quest to excellence in this teaching profession. This time, we, come, we have come to the highly anticipated part of this learning session to formally introduce and give a background about our stupendous resource speaker. Let us have our Master Teacher One, Ma'am Ana Rose B. Cabrera. Okay, good morning, everyone. Clear po ba? Okay, so good, good morning, everyone. And it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our proponent and our resource speaker for today, who is going to talk to us about the developing growth mindset. And she is from Lakeside, Arizona, USA. And she finished Bachelor of Arts in Psychology at Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. A Master of Arts Psychology graduate mm -hmm. the University of Santo Tomas. A graduate certificate in Personal Education, Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. Master of Science in Educational Leadership Western Governors University, USA, and Doctor of Communication Graduate, University of the Philippines. And she worked as a psychometrician in the year 1984 to 1989 at Tamaro Group of Companies, Philippines, grade school teacher in the year 1989 to 2000, in a private school in Ayala, Alabang, Philippines, a school administrator, principal, in the year 2001 to 2006 in a private school in Ayala, Alabang, Philippines, special education teacher in the year 2006 to 2011 in a public school in Arizona, a special education director in the year 2011 to 2016 and public school in Arizona and a school superintendent and Bureau of Indian Education School, Arizona. And uh, she received a certificate from Arizona Department of Education as a special education teacher K-12 and a certified school psychologist K-12 and certified supervisor K-12 and a certified principal K-12 and a superintendent K-12. So ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming the superintendent of this Chibico Community School and the teacher's best friend, Dr. Marilu Cabrera Areno. Thank you so much for that generous introduction, Ms. Anna Rose. And I would like to welcome all of you. Good morning, uh, there in the Philippines. Good morning, Philippines. And it's Morning, here in Arizona. It's my pleasure to um, share some of my uh, resources to the teachers in the Philippines because part of my mission is to empower our educators. And um, I would like to especially mention there is a guest, as I mentioned here, uh, Teacher Celeste. She was my co teacher in the Learning Child School in Ayala, Alabang. Thank you for. Uh, joining us also, Teacher Celeste. And I saw my, my niece, Catherine Cabrera. Welcome, Kath. She is teacher Kath in our family. So I am so glad to be here this morning to uh, share with you a topic on um, developing growth mindset. And also I thank you for the invitation and you are always welcome to to invite me for other different topics. So 
I always think positive, talk positive, and feel positive. And I am encouraged with the positivity of all of you. So thank you so much. So without further ado, I would like to start with our topic for today. It's the developing growth mindset, okay? So let me share my screen. This is all live, okay? <laughs> so bear with me. We are on live recording. So um, as, you, as uh, teacher Rose mentioned, uh, I started my YouTube channel. It's called The Teacher's Best Friend. Why is it called The Teacher's Best Friend? Because I wanted to consider myself as always the teacher's best friend. And I love to be called as Teacher Malu. That's uh, how my colleagues, my friends uh, called me before. Teacher Malu, and it's it's a really a music to my ear to be called Teacher Malu. So now I started my channel. It's called Teacher's Best Friend, and the mission for that, the Teacher's Best Friend, is uh, at the beginning. I just wanted to share some professional development that I learned also here in the United States, and uh, empower teachers, especially those uh, who live in in far away. You know, like. Uh, teachers that cannot go to on-site professional development, like they cannot travel to the city, uh, they cannot uh, travel to some event, big event that is offered by schools or the Department of Education, at least through my channel, I can reach them out. That's how the teacher's best friend started. And I think uh, I am beginning to see the result of my mission because I am now here in front of you uh, delivering a topic on developing growth mindset. And um, thank you for inviting me and thank you for uh, reaching out to me as well to, to share whatever I learned uh, here in the United States, okay? So the developing growth mindset, it's actually adapted from the book of uh, Donald Wilson and Marcus Conyers. These authors, they write uh, for uh, an organization, it's called ASCD. It's like an association of educators here in the Philippines. And I think I shared their website. They also offer some uh, webinar online on archive. So if you would like to check on that, they have a lot of uh, free webinars and, and webinars that are on their archive. So feel free to, to do a research if you would like to explore more on their professional development under the ASCD. Okay, so let's uh, start the topic on growth mindset. So what is really a growth mindset? It is based on the belief that the basic qualities are things you can cultivate through your effort your strategies and help from others. I think uh, I remember the quote for the day, if I am not mistaken that, uh, you know, intelligence is not really like genetic. It's something that we develop. It's something that we cultivate. It's the same thing with the growth mindset. So it, it depends on how you see your, uh, your mindset. Is it like, towards the growth or towards it is just fixed mindset. So we're going to, to move to those uh, comparisons later. So it's, it's really basically something that we cultivate, we enrich through the help of ourselves and the others, people around us. And most especially the educators are big contributory factor in developing the growth mindset of our students. So that's according to Carol Dweck. And then it says like a mindset plus method is growth. I remember our game a while ago is like forget and advise. So this one is mindset plus method is equals growth. So if we have a mindset and you provide strategies, you provide methods, you provide opportunity, there will be 
growth. And what are the things we need to remember? So there are uh, what we call potential. What is a potential? It is defined as the neurocognitive capacity for acquiring the knowledge, skills, attitudes to achieve higher level of performance in any domain. So it means each and every one of us has a potential. It only depends on how we cultivate that potential, how we enrich it, how we develop, how we use the potential. Is it for the good? Is it for something not productive? So each and every one of us has a potential. And mindset can be the engine of motivation. That's according to Hattie and Anderman. So when we say mindset, it has something to do with the motivation as well. So if you have the, the correct mindset, if you have the right mindset, you have the positive motivation. So you're heading to a good direction. So with, with the with the right mindset and with the potential combined, you will lead to a success. And what is methods? In the formula that I presented to you, it represents a suite for learning and teaching strategies, skills, lessons, ideas, and frameworks. So in the educational setting, who is responsible for the methods? It's the educator. It's our, these are the teachers. So even the student has a potential, even the student has the proper mindset. If they don't have the correct method, the growth is not going to happen. So it's all a combination of things. So I just wanted to emphasize that in education, in learning, the most important formula or ingredient to the mixture are the teachers. That's why uh, I always uh, salute the teachers. I always salute uh, good teachers, hardworking teachers, and creative teachers who go out of their way to find means and strategies and ideas to develop and reaching lessons to their students. So you need to remember that teachers, you are the important ingredient in the classroom, okay? And do not just say, I am just a teacher because we are the best people on earth because we educate everyone. So what are the seven principles of developing growth mindset? And I'm just going to enumerate them to you and explain them to you uh, one by one later. So the first one is understand first the mindsets. Okay, what are the mindsets? and keep plasticity front of the mind. So it's like, we're going to uh, learn about how the brain works and learn with practical optimism. We need to set growth goals, get the feedback needed, improve methods and focus on progress, not perfection. So these are the seven principles of developing growth mindset. So let's start with the first uh, principle, principle one, understanding the mindsets. So there are two sides of the, of the mindset. So we have the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. And you can start asking yourself, where do you fall on this uh, polarization? Okay, so let us describe them. In terms of uh, challenges, a person or individual with growth mindset, they face challenges. They do not back out. They don't get scared. They are brave enough to face challenges. And those uh, people or individual with fixed mindset, they avoid challenges. When, it, when things get hard, they just give up and they just say, I'm not in for that, okay? And in terms of obstacles, people with growth mindset, they keep going and they even keep going when it gets tough, when it gets harder. They, they face challenges with positivity, with their thinking, with their talking and with their feeling. So they are really getting tough as, the, as they, uh, it gets uh, hard, you know? 
And for the fixed mindset, they give up easily. And sometimes they become so defensive. But do you remember, I don't know if you played the, it's called Rubik's Cube. So people during that time, I was in college when they started to play that Rubik's Cube. And you see who are those people that have growth mindset. Sometimes they don't sleep. They really finish the Rubik's. They have to, to kind of form the different sides of the same color. And then other people who give up easily, they say, I'm not going to waste my time with that. So it's like you see the difference. Uh, people with growth mindset for them, even just a simple thing of uh, fixing a Rubik's cube is already a challenge. They learn to analyze how to form those, uh, those parts to make it all the same color in every side. So that's just an example. And then another one in terms of effort, for people with growth mindset, they see effort as essential for achieving mastery. And for the other side, the fixed mindset, they see effort as pointless. Like for example, probably during the time that you did the review for your licensure exam, maybe some of you, they don't sleep. You keep on reading, you keep on studying, you attend review center because you would like to achieve mastery and, and uh, get a good score on the licensure exam. And for some people, they say, oh, I'll study later. I have a party to go to, or I'll watch a movie. So things like that, you know, the easy, easy going people. But uh, some people that are really in, in the growth mindset, they will not stop until they achieve mastery. And in terms of uh, facing criticism, growth mindset, uh, people with growth mindset, they actively learn from negative but useful feedback. They don't take it as personal when you give feedback or when you, some people, they are critiquing others. They take it as a constructive criticism. They learn from it and improve themselves. And others, they ignore. And sometimes they even, you know, get angry and get mad. And how about the success of others? So if you see a person who is happy to see other people being successful, those kind of people, they have growth mindset. They learn from and is, they are inspired from the success of other people. And while people will, with fixed mindset, they are threatened by the success of others. So they get intimidated or sometimes, you know, they get jealous. So, but I am so happy to hear all of you teachers as a start of the attendance, like you always emphasize to think positive. I love that. I should share that to the teachers here. You know, think positive, talk positive, and even feel positive. So it means uh, whatever we do, whatever uh, we hear, whatever we say, or when we see people uh, being successful, then we are happy for them because we think positive and we feel positive. That is very good. And then, what is the ABC model applied to mindsets in education? So there's always assumptions, behaviors, and consequences with regard to fixed mindset or growth mindset. What is the assumptions? The assumption is our abilities and intelligence are fixed and innate and largely the product of genetics. So th that's how it was assumed in a fixed mindset approach that you know your intelligence is is from your parents from your genes and it's innate and uh you know it's if like when you're smart then you're smart so they believe in that assumption while in the growth mindset they believe that our abilities and intelligence are malleable and can be improved so it's like yes it's true Probably genetically, uh, you have a good genes, your parents are intelligent, they're smart, but it's not all that, you know, uh, it need, you need to enrich that, you need to provide opportunity in order for that intelligence to, to grow. 
And uh, what is the behaviors in terms of the fix and the growth mindset? Let's say in the classrooms and schools, like a few students identified as having high levels of innate talent are provided a conducive environment to allow, allow them to flourish. And on the other hand, fewer opportunities are offered or assessed um, to having less innate talent. And while in the growth mindset, educators create opportunities for all. Students are supported with feedback and progress in the goal of, and progress is the goal, not the perfection. So let me go deeper into that. So if let's say a teacher has a fixed mindset, and I hope that's not us, okay? What they do in the classroom is they only focus on the smart students and they ignore the one that are not so good or sometimes those that are uh, challenged uh, in terms of behavior, you know, they, they don't care about those group of students. They just care about the smart one, the good students and all that. And that is a fixed mindset approach. What is the growth mindset if you are a teacher? You need to think that all your students, whether the, they are the A students or they are the students with special needs or they are the students with behavior problem, we need to look at them as equal. We as teachers, we need to create opportunities for all students, not just for our favorite students or the easy to teach students, okay? And of course, students are supported with feedback. As teacher, we, we give them feedback. We acknowledge their success and we guide them with their weaknesses. And of course, as a teacher also, we don't always uh, aim for perfection. It's like everyone needs to get a perfect score. Everyone needs to you know, uh, not make mistake in the test and all that. We need to recognize uh, like the progress, the tiny, tiny achievement or little steps of our students. That's how a growth mindset approach is in the classroom. And in terms of consequences, many students are not given opportunities to learn and grow. So that is the consequences because of the fixed mindset in the classroom. Not all students have the opportunities to grow. Not all students are given uh, equal treatment. And while in the growth mindset, students across the spectrum realize higher levels of achievement and teachers are supported with effective professional development. So I am so pleased to see educators in our country, um, you know, I can see the thirst for professional development. Teachers are always uh, like, looking for some something to learn, looking for something to improve their craft, to their, their teaching strategies and all that. Do you know that in the United States, sometimes, I, I, I hate to say this, sometimes you need to pay teachers to attend professional development. So if you ask them to, to come, let's say on a Saturday to attend professional development, you will pay them. But I know in, in some areas in our country, they are the one paying for a webinar for professional development and all that. So, and I'm so glad to see educators that are thirst for knowledge, thirst to improve uh, their craft. So let's move to uh, principle number two. And I would like you to choose, um, what side of the brain you would like to have. So it says learning changes the brain. And I hope everybody uh, is agreeable with that. Like the more you provide learning, the more you provide experiences, hands-on experiences, uh, you do multiple intelligence approach, like not just, you know, not just your intellectual, but also your, your other aspects of uh, intelligence, like musical, bodily kinesthetic, your, uh, even, even uh, people that loves to do outdoor, something like that. If, if those uh, areas 
are encouraged or um, provide opportunities, then there is a big changes in the brain development because it says hip plasticity front of the mind. So this is how the brain looks like for the fixed mindset versus mindset. And I love the colorful side of the brain. So look at that. I would like to focus on the growth mindset and you can just read the other side later. So look at the colorful brain. So it says their view challenges as opportunities, acknowledge and embrace uh, the weaknesses, learn to give and receive constructive criticism and so on and so forth. So if I may ask you, which brain side do you want? Is it the dull one or the colorful one? So I know your answer definitely. So we all want the colorful side of the brain. So what is principle number three? Learn with practical offering. Five strategies for developing. So uh, the first one, it says, this is in terms of like the teachers in, in the classroom with their students. This is already how you uh, encourage or develop a growth mindset with your students through practical optimism. So the first approach is at the end of the class period or at the end of your school day, you may ask the student to recall one thing that has gone well for them. You know, sometimes we we tend to not acknowledge uh, students with their success during the day. So I, I know there are so many students in, in the classroom, especially in, in the Philippines, they have a big number of population in its classroom. And sometimes it is impossible for the teacher to have a, a, a small talk or conversation with each and every one of the students. but. At least uh, you make sure that every day you focus on some students and then the next day with the other students, just to ask them what things has gone well for them. You can even throw it as a question to the entire class and uh, maybe whoever is ready to share can share. And then maybe the next day others can share. So that is one way of uh, developing their optimism. Focus on what, what good things happen for the day, okay? So that when they go home, they're happy to greet their parents and uh, give the parents the good news that they had a good day in school because my teacher, my teacher uh, Melody, my teacher Lawrence, my teacher Anna, and all my teachers are really very good and they recognize me and they care about me. And then the second is, you can also uh, practice like at the beginning of your period or your school day, encourage the student to reflect. So sometimes the other one is uh, at the end of the day, like what, what went well. And then here, maybe other student can share. What did you experience that you know gives you positive feeling or makes you feel good yesterday? So just, just a brief, uh, discussion, maybe five minutes. And sometimes uh, you, you will hear every day. If you keep on doing that, you will uh, kind of rotate or hear every student talk. You can, you can even uh, see their inner feelings, how they perceive things. And you can even get feedback on how are you doing as a teacher? Because sometimes they say, oh, teacher, uh, your lesson yesterday on science on uh, about this topic was really good. I enjoyed it. Things like that. So small talk with the students um, give them sense of importance and uh, develop that uh, optimism in them. Nurture students to keep daily record of their incremental progress using different modalities such as, you know, it depends on uh, what group of students you have. I know for some of you, if you have the inclusion where you have students with special needs in the classroom, they can use picture. And some uh, kids that are really advanced in writing, they can do journal. And for some creative students, they can create video. So what is what I am 
I, I meant about this step is, uh, you know, uh, we had to teach also our kids to make a self-assessment, how they are doing, how they are progressing on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of their studies, in terms of their uh, lessons or uh, towards their credits to graduation. So learn how to teach them how to self-assess and record their progress. And the next one is support students in identifying and expressing feelings of gratitude. You know, uh, be thankful in every little things. That is being optimistic. It's like, I know life is not perfect. Lesson is not perfect. The day is not always perfect, but there is always something good that we can recognize every day. And we need to be thankful for those little things, little good things every day. And we need to like encourage our students to do the same thing. I don't know, um, like because I taught in a school with uh, that are really in the United States. There are also population that are they call them the Title One school. Those are like underprivileged compared to the others, and, and you don't know how they did during the night or in their home? Do they have a good home environment? Did they sleep well? Did they even eat good food? But, you know, checking on them, asking them, how are they? How did they do and all that, uh, that will have a connection between the student and the teacher, okay? So encourage students to look forward to a new learning experience with anticipation and excitement. So sometimes, uh, I can see the teachers in Makabebe High School, they are all super jolly, they are happy teachers, and probably your students are also happy because you are very positive and they are not afraid to go to school. But I remember, you know, I, I had my elementary and high school in the Philippines and even college, and I see a lot of strict teachers, you know, like if you are a student, you are afraid to go to, to your class or to the school because you, are, you don't want to see your strict teacher. And I hope uh, that is no longer you know, present in, the, in, in our present educational system because of uh, the, the, I mean, the approach now is different from before. Maybe during my time, the teachers are really you know, terror and all that but now teachers are very pleasant. So uh, we need to develop that excitement to our students. We need to encourage them to enjoy learning, not to fear learning and to uh, like appreciate teachers instead, instead of fear their teachers, okay? So let's move to the next one. I think my slide is frozen. Are you all with me? Okay. So let's move to principle number four. It says set growth goals, strategies for setting and reaching growth goals. So it says advise students to define their goals by identifying in clear terms what they hope to accomplish. This is more on teaching the students to set goals for themselves. Like, for example, you have a student uh, who would like to, let's say for a senior class, the 12th grade, because you are in, in the high school, and you have a student that uh, wanted to go to the engineering college after high school. So how are they going to do it? The, you have to like teach them how to set that goals. First, you need to pass all your math classes and listen to your teachers, you know, learn a lot of mathematics and geometry and all that in order to be a successful engineering student. And another goal is to, you need to teach also the students how to look for schools, like what what schools are really, you know, their forte is engineering. So we can guide them. You can apply to this college or you can apply to this university, things like that. 
So we have to uh, advise students to define their goals and uh, to have a, a clear in terms of uh, what they wanted to accomplish and help students think through the process of accomplishing the goal. So in order for you to go to the engineering college, what is the first thing that you need to accomplish? Of course, you need to pass all your courses. You can't go to college if you have failing grades. So uh, students need to understand, like, you know, in order for you to go to your goal here, you need to do all the steps down the bottom. Do your assignments daily, uh, pass the test, go to your class every day, and don't be absent and all that. So we need to uh, let our students understand to set their growth goals. Remind students that big goals are achieved by planning and working through. So as I have mentioned, it should be a step-by-step -step process. You cannot be an engineer overnight. There are uh, a lot of process, a lot of steps to be, to be an engineer. So they have to learn how to uh, plan for their goals. And begin new units and projects by having students fill in graphic organizer. So, so something like a strategy that uh, instead of just giving the entire uh, lesson, we can help the students to think by a small step, like give them graphic organizer. Because some students are not uh, like when you teach a concept, they cannot get it right away. You have to break it down. You have to uh, scaffold. So that's uh, how the number four uh, is suggesting. We need to uh, provide organizational thinking to our students. And I know most teachers are doing that. And of course, as they succeed in one step, you can celebrate with them. Like for example, um, all your students pass your quarterly test. So we need to celebrate that success. And then the second quarter test and, and so on until they finish the entire uh, course or the entire year. So it's just a small winning, but teachers are recognizing those incremental success or celebrating uh, the little success of our students. And most importantly for principle number five is get the feedback needed. And what are the strategies for giving and getting feedback? Let's be specific about the skill. Like if you are uh, teaching an art lesson and you ask your students to uh, make a poster, so how are you going to give feedback? Oh, uh, good job. Yes, that is a feedback, but we can be very specific. Like, um, I like the way you uh, created your poster on um, preservation of forests. Your forests are very uh, green, very lush. And um, I, I like the way you, you uh, made your mountains you know, very colorful and, and all that. So it's very specific. Instead of just saying good job or excellent work, we need to recognize the details in giving feedback. And make feedback personal and tailored to, um, to your students, their individual needs. Um, like, for example, all, all your um, students participated in one activity and they did it in a group. So you can recognize the participation of each individual child. Like, uh, let's say there is someone who, who sang, someone who did the acting, someone who did the drama and all that. So you can say like, Johnny, I like the way you sing the song. Like, for example, the national anthem. So it's very specific you are acknowledging how they perform in that specific task. So it's tailored to an individual person so that they also realize their success with those little things. You know, just the mere singing is already a success. And deliver the feedback promptly 
so the students will remember the learning task and can be more productive. Okay, because if you if you recognize what they did, they will do it again the right way, especially if it is uh, specific to that task. So when suggesting alternative strategies, emphasize uh, the students uh, decides how to use your guidance. Like for example, when you are teaching something, sometimes we tend to jump with uh, teaching everything to our students. We do not give them the opportunity to to think you know, like to have the metacognition, think on their own, do the brainstorming. We tend to just teach them how to do it. Sometimes we have to give freedom to our students to think on their own and to brainstorm on their own and just tell them like, if you need help, I'm just here, you can ask questions. It means like we are empowering our students to be independent. To do, the, to do their own uh, discovery of learning. So that is uh, very important as well. And uh, we don't always uh, kind of give unsolicited guidance or unsolicited feedback. Sometimes it's good for them to seek that from their teachers. Find at least one positive thing to say about students' work. That's why I am very glad that we started with that introduction of thinking positive, talking positive, and feeling positive because our students need that too. We can tell one thing positive to them or say so, or, or at least uh, you know, express even just a pat in the back that is already an expression of appreciation to them. And I am so glad that you practice that in your school and maintain a positive and encouraging outlook, which I think you did it all for today. And hooray to all of you. And use different modalities in providing feedback. As I have mentioned, uh, it's not always verbal. Sometimes you can do even hand signal, thumbs up, or uh, even you know through signs and, and drawings like that. If, if you have students with uh, because I, I used to teach in a school with special needs in the Philippines and in the United States. So sometimes hand signal are more effective than talking. So you can also do that. And I'm pretty sure you're doing that already. And use I statement to acknowledge growth and the use of learning strategies. So just like what I mentioned, you, you say, I like the way you help Johnny uh, clean the trash or clean the floor. You know, I like the way you uh, support your group in um, doing this project. So things like that. You always say I, and you uh, you are uh, giving the feedback from from yourself from the bottom of your heart. So principle number six is improve methods. And, and I know this is like the core of being a teacher, our teaching strategies and the best practices. How are we going to uh, foster a positive growth-minded learning environment? So give students a positive greeting when they arrive each day. So I don't know, you have seen a lot of those video in the social media, you know, there are teachers, they stand and this is the approach i i don't know if you're familiar with harry wong and that's my favorite uh, book when uh during the time i started teaching harry wong's book of first hundred days of school and um he said in order for your day to be excellent you need to stay by the door and greet your students as they enter your classroom and when you say greet it can be like you know you can say good morning, but I saw a lot of video where teachers are, they do high five, they do handshake, and they even, you know, dance with their students as they enter the classroom. So that is like, you know, a, what a way to start a day. If you are a student and you know your teacher is doing that, you always wanted to come to school every day and enter that door to your teacher's classroom. Ask students to do simple interest inventory by writing down five favorite things they like to do. So we, we, we also consider 
our students, like when we are developing our lessons, we can ask for their feedback. Um, you know, what do they enjoy most with the strategies? Do they enjoy uh, most like using a video or using uh, role playing or using, you know, just lecture and all that? So you can, you can uh, even solicit feedback from your students and uh, ask them to do interest inventory. And with those inventory, you will learn how to approach your, your students. You will know their interests and you will kind of lean on that in order to, to uh, kind of encourage them to listen, encourage them to participate. Spend a couple of minutes each day to struggling students. So as what I have mentioned with a teacher with a growth mindset, they don't just focus on the, the excellent students or those students that are easy to teach. We also need to be reminded that there are students that does not learn as fast as the others. So we have to remember to stay some time to, to walk them to uh, do one-on-one -on -one with them or small group instructions, okay? And be a role model who shows students how to be empathic. So if they see that your the teacher is so kind, so respectful to the feelings of others, then they learn that, that way too. And I like how uh, Sir Elmer said, <laughs> like her standard in choosing teacher is, not only that they are beautiful and handsome, but they also have a good heart. So th that's really very good. Because as I mentioned uh, during our exchange of chat, if I may ask you, do you remember your lesson in math in high school that well? Or do you remember better the teacher, your favorite teacher, because the teacher was so kind to you, was so nice to you, and uh, you know they make your life enjoyable in the classroom. So we don't always remember the lesson, but we remember our good teachers, isn't it? And actively listen to students attending uh, to the meaning behind what they say before checking in with them to make sure you understand, okay? So that is to develop trusting relationship. A uh, little talk with the students. Uh, I don't know, um, but in, in the United States, as you all see in the news, sometimes suicide is, is uh, you know, it's happening in the school. And we are teaching teachers to be sensitive, how to identify those uh, behavior and feelings. It's the same thing when we attend to our students and be sensitive with, you know, the way they talk, the way they move, the way they behave, the way they react, we begin to understand them. Sometimes without even saying a word, your student understand you already. You know, you just look at them in the eye, you just do your raise your hand like that they know already what you meant because there is a relationship and connection between a student or between the students and the teacher and and that's where the trusting relationships start so now uh let's move to the principle number seven which is uh i think the last of the principles in the growth mindset focus on progress not perfection so it's like no one is perfect. We all know that, okay? The only perfect person in the world was already crucified. So no one is perfect. So let's not focus on perfection, but on progress. So, uh, and, and we know that uh, each individual student, they have their, their own steps to progress, their own steps to learning. So if Johnny is in is in, uh, sometimes we group them, group one, group two, group three, and, and uh, for giving intervention, they do tier one or tier two or tier three. Those kids in tier one, or maybe sometimes in the lowest, their progress is not the same as those kids in, in the different tier. So we have to celebrate the individual success of our students. Although Johnny just uh, gained two points, 
and the others, uh, they, gain, they gain 10 points. It's still a growth. So we have to, uh, we have to uh, celebrate those success. And as I remember uh, when I was teaching a student, like students with special needs, you know, when they were able to uh, recite or say a sentence, that is all already something to celebrate because we cannot compare them to some students that are really very, you know, advanced and they can, they can memorize a whole paragraph, they can memorize a whole story, but a special student can only say a sentence or sometimes a phrase, but that is already something to celebrate. So focus on progress, not perfection. So that is the principle number seven for growth mindset in dealing with our students. So thank you so much. And I think I skipped my uh, last slide. So thank you so much for listening. And um, this is from the teacher's best friend, yours truly, the teacher's best friend, Mary Lou Areno. And after this, uh, I would like to give the floor to Sir Elmer, our principal for our discussion and some insights from the growth, developing growth mindset talk. So thank you for listening teachers. And I thank hope you to the you some insight. And I welcome comments too. So sir, sir. Very good insights ma'am. So we will proceed with the part two of our webinar, which is the discussion and sharing. And our facilitator is uh, Dr. Elmer Meneses. Take it away, sir. Thank you very much. I will remove my screen now, okay? There, so I can see all of you, all the pictures. Okay, uh, are the groups listening? Uh, I would like you to focus on two questions. Okay, number one is, what is your important learning on uh, this topic, regarding this topic? And then number two, moving forward, uh, how will you implement the concept of growth mindset in supporting your students' achievement, so I'm look. Uh, I, I I am expecting something, no, that uh, that uh, you can propel, so that we can uh, we can adapt this uh, kind of uh, strategy to uh, improve our uh, relation with uh, with our students. Okay, so with the with the groups, uh, uh, you can uh, have now your. Uh, uh, brainstorming to address or to answer these two questions. And I will assign probably uh, five members in each group. And group one, and then uh, in group two. So we have five rooms for breakout room, okay? I hope I am doing it right. Okay, uh, uh, we have now our uh, uh, break uh, groups, okay? Do you see the, like where, what group you are? Wala pa do. Wala pa, okay, so let me. I have a few more people to assign.
Okay. So let's see. You will see uh, an invitation to join the room. Did you see that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you may go to your room and uh, we have 15 minutes and then come back, okay? Okay, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. What the I would like to thank you for all the evidence. Okay. Good morning, ma'am. Rona. Good morning, po. Quiet, ma'am. Hindi po ako mag-open ng video. Nagtitipid po ako ng MV. Quiet. I don't want to eat. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. You eat it yourself. Bembe, are you eating now, Bembe? I'm eating ice cream. So, I'm kay Ma'am Alma. Andito ako sa ilalim. <laughs> ano, walang signal sa bahay. Pagbubulin si... Gusto ko yung upo mo. Uncle Ay, Roger. Ay, lang ba? Diba? Ano, meron pa. <laughs> meron pang iba. Sali, I have the same hairline. <laughs> yeah. Wala po ah, signal sa upang bahay. Kaya dito po ako Ilan sa... Ilan tayo? Sa oh, yeah. dirty kitchen. <laughs> dirty kitchen. Here. I think some groups, they have like only five. Hi. Have six. Hi. Uh, hello. Hello, Paul. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, hello, Paul. Good morning. Wala po akong signal. Cute, Mo. What ice cream? The rank ice cream. Look, and fresh and nice. Thank Here. you, Bembe. Try so, Doc, we are five here in uh, room one. Five members. So, yung first question is, what is the most important thing that we've learned from here? And then, you can abandon this. Ako po first, uh, magsimula na po ako dun sa question. Okay, so question number one. So similar, uh, first, thank you po sa pagbigay niyo ng uh, lecture na to regarding mindset. And um, based doon po sa mga na-discuss niyo from principles, uh, principles one to seven, I think we are currently uh, doing those um, things those uh, methodologies and strategies were in, we can able to, uh, we, as we approach or deal with our students. So, this po dun sa mga nakita ko, uh, they are uh, synonymous or they are, in, uh, they are incorporated to guidance work. So, uh, today po kasi sa, sa DepEd, they were able to, uh, naglabas po sila ng isang toolkit where it is a step-by-step -step procedure wherein uh, we have to know the students and then how we deal with the students. So the proper approach. Yun nga po yung isa yung give. Um, we, we have to appreciate whatever they, uh, they are doing. Uh, basta maganda. And then yung greetings, yun po yung sabi nga po ninyo. Yung nakikita nyo some, they, they have the high five. Actually, um, just like uh, I, I would I would like to share my experience yesterday. Well, uh, may isip ko kasi parent na nag-chat sa akin. And then, um, sabi niya, ayaw na rin po mag-aral ng anak niya. And then, uh, nag-chat po ako sa group, uh, sa GC po namin ng mga bata. And then after uh, stating some uh, encouraging words and then uh, or encouraging statements, biglang sabi ng parent, 
uh, ma'am, ayan na po, sumasagot na. So, parang kaga kung dati po, yung panahon na uh, early years, tayo natatakot sa mga uh, teachers, same as today, uh, there are today yung mga students, hindi sila natatakot, but they do follow, they follow because we, for them, nagbibigay tayo ng ano, good advices and then uh, uh, siguro they see us are their uh, ano, role model po. Yun po. Thank, Thank you. you. I will let you discuss and I will go to the other rooms, okay? Can I can we hear from you? From Bilma? Yes, po, sir. Am I loud yes. and clear, po? Yes, loud and clear. Please share your idea. Okay, po. So what I love about this international webinar is that it awakens the growth mindset in me. It actually reminds me that I can grow more and I can become more. So what I have learned about this webinar is that having a growth mindset is like looking at the brighter side of everything. Sabi nga po ni Catriona Gray, always look at the yung lagi niyang sinasabi yung silver lining. No? So it is like or it is similar to having a positive mindset. Now, how am I going to apply this in our classroom? Well, if we have this growth mindset, we will be able to encourage all our students to do better and remind them that it is fine to fall sometimes, but make sure to stand right after. As the proverb seven times, stand up eight. So, yan, pwede ko pong implement yan and sabihin lagi. Uh, learn with practical optimism and then number seven focus on progress not perfection so at this time of pandemic siguro yung implementation ng uh, meron tayong uh, talagang finofollow na mga rubrics mga ganon e ngayon, uh, kung sinabi natin ganito lamang ganito lamang is to widen yung o oh, yung acceptance natin sa mga mga output ng mga bata so kung dati ah uh, ini nga sana eh kasi kasi talo basta uh, uh, makita natin yung yung effort ng bata na gumawa siya uh, pero halimbawa makikita mo ba yung effort na bata na nag-submit ng output walang mga sagot so ah uh, medyo yun siguro ating uh, meron tayong tawag nito uh, learning changes the brain kumbaga may approach tayo dito and then learn with practical optimism siguro yung ating approach pag yun hindi so yun ang ating magiging ano siguro through implementation of growth mindset yun siguro yung changes in the approach Uh, 
widen yung uh, kumbaga yung level of acceptance natin sa pag-ibig. Uh, siguro ano na, hindi na yung ganun ka-stricto. Basta makita natin yung effort because at this time of pandemic, whether we like it or not, meron tayong ding negligence on our part kasi uh, gusto naman natin turuan sila, no? Kumbaga hindi siya hindi siya intentional negligence. It is just involuntary negligence kasi uh, kumbaga pang ano yan, hindi natin ma-approach talaga ng buong-buo ang mga ba kailangan ng tamong manyad feedbacks. So adwa, adwa yung adwa principles. Oh, so upon uh, upon uh, getting their feedbacks, uh, we can uh, apply uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, scaffolding para hmm. matulungan sila on their uh, studies. So from there, uh, we can help them uh, achieve kung ano yung kailangan nilang uh, matutunan. Yan lang. <laughs> Nano nga ulit. <laughs> Yun nga po, dahil po naka-focus tayo doon sa progress. Na, 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 na. Oh, we are focusing on the progress, not the perfection, sabi nga. So, kung uh, ang uh, learner natin is uh, uh, slow ang uh, progress niya dahil nga uh, self-learning uh, module tayo, so it's very hard for them na marriage out natin sila dahil nga uh, sa situation natin ngayon dahil sa COVID. So, mm-hmm. yung focus natin is on the progress not the perfection. Yun lang. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so mumu na i-discuss tayo pa ito. Ang focus on progress not the not perfection. Not on not on uh, and then action. and then uh, we will uh, focus on the current on the current mm-hmm. situation nga dahil we are on Hello po ma'am apology uh, po na- Nawawala ka sa group Nawala po, nawalan po ako ng connection, ma'am. Na-disconnect po ako from the Zoom. Oh, sige, I'll put you in group 4, okay? Okay po. Thank you so much po. Alright. And I'll see you there. Uy. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Doktora. <laughs> I'm back here with group four, <laughs> and Lawrence is here. Papa. Yes, oh, ma'am. Hello, po, ma'am. I'll visit the other room. Daka friend. Hi, hello Hi, po. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, hello. Hi, good morning po. Good morning po, Mama Marilu. Good morning. Good morning po. Kumusta kayo? Pwede naman po. Okay, Kakatapos po. lang po. Opo, kakatapos Ayos lang, lang po, po namin mag-share do ng mga thoughts po namin about din sa questions na binigay po. O, oh, sige. Pinakailang minutes na ba tayo? Para pabalikin ko na sila sa room. Wala pang 15, ano? Wala, Wala pa po. naman po. Ah, mukhang, mukhang accelerated class kayo, ah. Nag-ready. 
Miss Mary Jane, see Mr. Rolex, Saria, see Melody, and Marisa. Okay, I'll see you later. I'll visit the other rooms, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma. 2020, 2021. Oh, yun na kasi yung kanyang ating pera mo, wala naman tayo. Ngayon tayo marami. So, pasok pa din naman. Siguro ang gawin natin para lumabas lang siyang 2020 hanggang December 2020 yung mga online communications. Pero kung wala namang date yung mga home virtual visitations sa atin, hindi na makikita. Siguro pwede natin i-upload, no? Mga pictures, screenshots ng ano. Ang gaba basta, basta meron tayo ng ano kasi yung time naman talaga ni ano wala akong maiisip na ano ngayon lang talaga yung mga tawag dito yung yung virtual ano namin yung visitation pa namin Mother Earth ngayon na po pala yun ay eh, 2021 uh, school pantry wala namang siguro mga pictures hindi naman makikita kung yung pictures lang pakikita natin na nagbigay tayo pwede na yun siguro school pantry hmm. Oh, okay, pero uh, na may date takta na lang. Ba? Kasi gagawan pa ito ng video kasi nila Sir Eric, kaya medyo okay. ano ako yung baka mag-alangan tayo sa araw, marami. Matagal pa mag-edit ng video. Okay. Kasi binibigay mo yung memo, yung memo dated May 17. Pinos okay. May 18. Mm. Di ba? 19 oh. nagmeeting tayo. Uh, ano uli pala? Kinet Pinoy yata May 20. Ay hindi 19. Tapos nagmeeting tayo ka uh, nagmeeting naman tayo kaagad. O tapos ano ba? Uh, Siyempre hindi naman agad-agad makuha sa ano eh itong isang araw hanggang Sabado bukas pwede pa naman siguro bago. See you later. Oh, can I reach the rest? <laughs> Okay, is it all access back? <laughs> Thank you so much, dear teachers, for participating in the breakout room. At this moment, uh, at this moment, um, it's without a doubt that this day. Uh, okay po, uh, Ma'am Marilu, are we going to present the idea po pa per group or okay na po? Um, I think Sir Elmer. Okay po, Sir yeah, Elmer. Yeah, so El Elmer will uh, take charge of the facilitation for the discussion. Okay, uh, 
I I think uh, the last group uh, that I joined uh, 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 shared so much of, of their ideas no? uh, regarding the two questions uh, given. And uh, uh, most of them uh, already already experienced such, no? but of course, this is an awakening that there, there got to be continuity and uh, there got to be enhancement of what they used to do uh, in their dip in different classes. So definitely, uh, most of the teachers, especially uh, of those uh, senior teachers, uh, develop uh, their expertise on how to handle classes. But of course, with this idea of the uh, uh, mind growth uh, uh, mindset, okay, uh, definitely everyone is awakened that there got really to be uh, a uh, sustained. Uh, uh, way on how, how to uh, keep the uh, momentum of each uh, student to continue striving for uh, improvement. Okay, uh, I think we can share the, the group of Sir George. Uh, can we do that, ma'am? A, a replay of what uh, the group of Sir George uh, have accomplished. Okay. Can we share that portion of, uh, I, I don't know what group is that, but that should have been group two, I think, that I have joined. Okay. Can we go back to that portion? Uh, I think, no, we cannot do so. Is there a possibility for us to to review the, the portion of uh, the sharing of group two, uh, consisting of Sir George, Ma'am uh, Vilma, Ma'am uh, Kabiling. Okay. Can we go back to that or shall I repeat the questions? Okay. okay, so we have the question number one. Uh, what is your important learning uh, on the topic? Uh, can I uh, can I ask Ma'am Bilma to repeat uh, her uh, uh, answer, uh, her idea on this question? Please, Ma'am Bilma, if you are already around. Can I have Ma, uh, Ma'am Bilma now? Is Ma'am Bilma around uh, in the in the? I think some of the teachers, uh, Sir Elmer, they get disconnected. No, that is our big issue now. Technology is the biggest problem. <laughs> okay. Can we can we start po our group na lang muna po while waiting for the others po? Okay. Apo. Uh, I'm a Melody po from our group. Sir Rolex, Ma'am Isai, Ma'am Grace, Ma'am Jane, and Ma'am Rhea. Question number one po, what is your important learning on the topic? So from what we have shared, our answers, uh, that we should always have that group mindset that helps us and others to grow, especially our students. And that we should not stop on what we only know, but we should always continue learning. And then there is always a room for improvement. Do not fear to learn something new. And even if we make mistakes, we should learn from it. There is no harm in trying. And then let us be open also to new learning that help us so we can also help our students. Okay. And also, it is important to have a positive mindset even in the darkest time of our lives. That's our answer for uh, question number one. And then um, question number two, po. moving forward, how will we uh, implement the concept of growth mindset in supporting our students' achievement? 
um, our answers, first is that by encouraging more our students to grow, by guiding them, uh, like what Ma'am Marilu uh, mentioned, we can give them unsolicited guidance and also that uh, positive unsolicited, unsolicited feedback. And also, we can tell stories of what we read or watch and inspire our students on how the characters move forward and never ever give up on the challenges. Let us also uh, share with them the fixed and growth mindset. Let us teach them to set goals and how they can achieve that goal. And also, let us ask our students to also give us feedback. And let us believe in the potential of each of our students because everyone is unique. Thank you, Paul. Okay, thank you very much for your sharing. Okay, can we hear from other, other groups? Yes, for the yes, group, uh, group Rita, please go on. Group three, po. So there are uh, actually uh, meron po kung seven, three principles na apply ko for the first question. Number one is understand the mindset. So each one of us has different uh, views in life. So we must understand views of others. Kailangan po nating tanggapin na kung ano yung thinking mo, hindi na magkapareho ng thinking mo. We have to understand also the side of the other person you're talking with or you are interacting with. Next is keep plasticity, uh, keep plasticity front of mind. So we know that the characteristic of the plasticity is what we call being the, uh, sometimes it is elastic, but then there are plastics that are not elastic. But then, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what I'm trying to say, yes. So what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say here now is to widen, no? Ah, because in pag plastic, yung misang di ba may mga brittle. So we have to be somehow, ah, what they call this, flexible in some ways, no? Hindi natin pa. Ito lang, yung katulad na sinabi yung fixed mindset. Ito lang, hindi ko ganan. Yan po ito. And then, number one is focus on progress, not perfection. So, lahat po tayo may mga imperfection. So, hindi po natin pwedeng na, kung anong nakikita na natin, do not expect what we see in us. Huwag natin i-expect kung ano ang Ah, uh, naki ah, uh, kung an wag tayong mag-expect sa iba. Na ito yung gusto mong makita sa iba. Eh paano kung hindi niya ano? Hindi naman niya kayang ano. So, in that, kailangan natin talaga a full understanding of our uh, understanding or the mindset in each and every one of us. So, how do we implement po? So, second question. So, to our students. So, pinag-usapan ko na yung flexibility flexibility number one is the widening of or the increasing or the level of acceptance to our students kung dati medyo strict to tayo kailangan natin medyo luwagan ng ating belt no kumbaga luwagan ang ating uh, borderline kumbaga uh, ay hindi uh, habaan ang ating borderline or uh, kailangan nating ao oh, Uh, nakita mo nag-effort yung bata, pero hindi niya na-meet yung expectation but the mere fact, he did his best in a particular requirement. So be it accepted, uh, uh, meron kang nakitang effort yung bata. Yan po, Doc. Yan lang po. So there is the necessity of a rubric. Ano, ma'am? Kailangan talaga may rubric kapag uh, nag-evaluate ka ng uh, uh, student's performance. no? Uh, yes. Para uh, widen, widen talaga yung boundary ng Uh, to commit error or any flexibility sa performance ng bata. Yes, very good. Rating scale po tayo lagi po dyan, Dok. Okay. Thank you very much, Ma'am Brida. Can we hear from the other groups, please? Yes po. Next up po kami, Sir, Dok, yes, Elmer. Ma'am, like po. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes po. So, our group uh, consists of Ma'am Kenneth, open naman po ng cam. <laughs> Sir Lance, Ma'am Marge, Sir Marco, and uh, 
uh, Sir Mark. Hello. Saan? Ayan. Kita niyo po ba ako? <laughs> Can you see me po? Hello. Okay po. Hello ma'am. Okay po. So, um, we're going to highlight two principles that uh, we have learned from the presentation of Ma'am Mary Lou. So the first one is asking for feedback. Okay, so, you know, undeniably, a pandemic introduced many challenges, especially on the teaching and learning situations. So as teachers, uh, we should fulfill our jobs or missions more passionately in a way of connecting more closely to the students, you know, because we know students can be so vulnerable during this time of pandemic, right? So as teachers, we have to broaden our understanding and show our love for our students to help them uh, more in any way possible, right? So, and for us to be able to help them uh, we can start by eliciting feedback from the learners, you know, for us to know which aspects uh, they need our help with, okay? So, so after having an idea on uh, what kind of help they need from us, uh, that's the time when we can already start our scaffolding techniques, you know, to help and support our students towards their achievement of what we expect from them, okay? And whatever output or accomplishment uh, they have made, um, may those accomplishments or outputs uh, be big and satisfying or small, we should show our support and um, appreciation for those. So, and that's how we can, you know, apply the seventh principle, which says, Focus on progress, not on perfection. Okay, thank you very much. That's very good. Uh, yeah, it, it's clearly emphasized, no? Uh, uh, wide idea that you have shared. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Laika. Thank you. Uh, are there others, please? Anyone ready to share? Any more? Can I hear the sharing of other groups, please? Ma'am Laika Kuna, please. Can we hear from you? Not yet ready. Can we have Sir George? Sir George, I would like your sharing be uh, replayed, uh, Sir George. Ay, sir. Apo, sir, share po ulit yung... Yung personal sharing ko lang po, sir. Apo. Hindi ko kasi na, hindi ko na-record yung mga sharing po nila eh. Okay. Okay lang po. Okay po, sir. Yeah, yes, thank you po, sir. Ay, sa akin yung, sa akin yung kagad na... May malaking impact agad sa akin. It's good to be reminded again yung sa sinasabi ni Madam kanina na a great opportunity for all. Kasi as teachers, kasi talaga po ang tendencies namin talaga or may tendencies kami lahat to love our student na excellent, smart one. Yung nagpapadali sa buhay namin sa classroom. Especially when mga pa paano na mga paperwork, paano na mga <laughs> maraming pinapasa. Gusto na namin din minsan ng lesson, matapos na lang eh. Doon, doon, doon nagkakaroon na ng ano yung crucial na may iwan ng mga may hina. O hindi na napapansin yung mababagal, the least one. Kaya, at doon, saminin namin na, um, na man namin o no, hindi, nagkakaroon kami ng fixed mindset. Eh, kaya it's good to be reminded po sa growth mindset na hindi dapat kami bumitaw doon. Dapat walang may iwan na kahit sinong bata sa loob ng classroom. Kami ang nag adjust Sabi ko nga, pag ikaw every little progress, especially po the last and the least and the lost one, every little progress na iparamdam mong sineselebrate mo yon big impact yun sa kanilang 
siguro sa buhay eh, sa buong buhay po nila. Sabi nga po kanina, Dr. Areno, hindi naman naalala ng mga students yung topic. The character, the, the good teacher ang naalala sa atin ng mga students. Okay. Kaya gusto ko rin yung inano nga na improve our methods. How? Yung yung more participatory on the part of the students, sila yung mas dapat natin tinatanong through mga feedbacks, especially this pandemic. Kung ang mga teachers ay labis-labis na nangapa, nahihirapan, lalo ako as a teacher at medyo matanda na sa profesyon, na nahihirapan, how much more ang mga bata, yung struggle siguro nila, mas nawala sila, mas nahihirapan sila. Kaya sabi ko, yun ang mas dapat natin. Kaya sabi ko, minsan din kay Mama Alma, as a guidance, Ma'am, from time to time, tinitignan natin ang mga teachers kung paano nila pinaalalayan ang mga, ang, mga, ang mga students. Baka nawawala na naman tayo because of the SPM. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry po. Kaya yun, sa akin, focus on the progress. I like the idea nun and not on the perfection and every is a celebration. Every little progress is a celebration. Okay. And Ba, ba? Yun lang po siguro, sir. Sabi oh, nga kayo okay. na, sa teacher, di ba, sir? Ako yata okay. nagiging fixed mindset. Buti na lang na-remind ako, na-awaken ako doon sa idea po. Sa principles. Hindi <laughs> 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 naman, sir. Hindi naman. Kakuan ka pa rin. Uh, na-progressive pa rin ang mind mo, sir. Uh, mind na uh, growth uh, pa rin naman ang utak mo, sir. And uh, continue to, uh, on that track, sir. Uh, you're making difference. Uh, thank you very thank much, you. sir. Uh, <laughs> Next group po, sino po ang magsishare pa? Can we hear from other groups? Ma'am Crisel, are you are you around? Ma'am uh, Crisel Tiglaw? Yes po, sir. Okay, please uh, uh, hear your... Para, para po sa akin, sir, um, since I'm a math teacher po, I am not only focusing on the on the product, but I am focusing on the process. Kasi po, uh, may mga bata na, na iiwanan at uh, hindi po natin uh, maiiwasan na hindi po nila alam yung mga certain topics in mathematics. So... To, uh, para po makaka cope po yung mga bata. So we need to um we need to do a certain um a certain na um task po para po sa kanila. Since po yung mga senior high school po is um homogeneous po yung mga bata. So ginagawa po namin um as a teacher um para po peer tutoring. Para po makakupo po yung mga bata. Yun lang po, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So, link, linkages no? uh, is very important. No? If we connect uh, the classroom to the students, especially during the pandemic, it will surely make uh, a big impact to inspire them and to keep them going and focus on their uh, studies. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am uh, Tiglao. Can we hear from other groups, please? Sure. Doc, group one. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am Rose. Uh, so from group one, sir, Doc, uh, a growth mindset is characterized uh, by the belief, uh, belief of an individual, the abilities that can, we, that can be developed, uh, improved upon and cultivated. So in other words, so it's a belief uh, that success can be learned. So a, a growth mindset leads to increased motivation. And not only motivation, but it's a love of learning. So that's leading to higher achievement. So additionally, uh, it's also translate into a resilience that is crucial for great accomplishment. So that is from yes. group one. Yes, yeah, so uh, the, the focus of group one is on uh, motivation. 
A highly motivated person can perform better. That is the emphasis of your book. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, that's a, a, a good uh, uh, emphasis from group one. Thank you. Po. Thank you. Other groups, please. Can we have other sharings? Okay. Uh, others, please. Ma'am, is Ma'am Kabiling around? Ma'am Kabiling? Yes po, sir. And I am part of Sir George's group po. Oh, yes. Uh, I recall. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay po. Okay. Kung wala na pong mag-share, probably... Uh, ang, ang sa akin, ang emphasis ko kasi, no? my emphasis uh, relative to what I have learned today is similar to what uh, Albert Einstein observed before. Uh, that according to this great man, the mind is stretched beyond, will never go back to its original dimension. So definitely, if we keep a uh, mind growth uh, mind setting, definitely will go beyond. Okay? Uh, our influence, our impact will go on and on until the, our students have graduated. And beyond graduation, I think, no? if we imputed the same values, the same principles, they could uh, survive this uh, lifespan. Okay, so with that, uh, Madam, uh, I think uh, that is uh, that suffice now. Uh, the different ideas from different sources, from the different groups. Hey, okay? thank you very much for your uh, sharing. We go back now. Thank you very much, uh, teachers. And, uh, you know, just listening to all of you, I am uh, very inspired and I am very proud that I am also a Kapampangan from Makabebe. So I, I am really very uh, pleased to hear your sharing and to see your enthusiasm as educators. And um, you are right. This topic of growth mindset is not new to you. Most of you are already doing it. Most of you are practicing it and most of you have it. You, you just need to realize that you have the growth mindset. And um, thank you so much. And I would like to uh, recognize all of you for being uh, passionate in education, passionate in teaching. And uh, thank you. So that's all I can say. And um, if you have questions, feel free to ask me. I will stop the video so we can just do like an informal conversation if, if you still have some time, okay?